everyone. Welcome to Elijah Streams. Today is Thursday, July 7th, 2022. I'm your host, Kelsey O'Malley. I'm filling in for Steve Schultz today. So glad to be with all of you guys. I'm excited about today's show. We have DeMonte Edmonds on with us, and he has amazing words and insight um, that God's been really speaking to him about the times we're living in now. Boy, are we seeing like domino effects of things just happening in the news. It's incredible to watch. I hope you're encouraged. You should be so encouraged right now. We're seeing God's hand move in such a powerful way. And maybe this is your first time watching today's show because you love DeMonte. And so you're on here with us today. If you could please hit that thumbs up button if you're watching on YouTube, that really helps Um get the message out and spread this video. If you haven't subscribed to us yet on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button and then that bell notification will just ring every time we're live so it'll alert you on your phone. If you're watching on Facebook, please hit those little heart buttons. Tell us where you're watching from. Uh, be interactive in the comments, share the video. That really helps the outreach of this and goes against the algorithms that, you know, it, it really helps us a lot more than you think. So thank you so much for liking and sharing the video. Boy, do we have an exciting show today. There is so much prophetic revelation and insight that you are going to hear from DeMonte. So let's go ahead and bring him on so he can start sharing because he has a lot to say. <laughs> so welcome to the show, DeMonte. It's good to have you on. Can you hear me? I'm not quite sure if you can. <laughs> yes, I can hear you perfectly. And thank oh, okay. you, Kelsey, for having me on. And uh, thanks to Steve and the team and all you guys that's doing a wonderful job uh, sharing prophetic updates and encouraging believers and sharing uh, cutting edge news, especially that's relevant for the body of Christ. So you have a lot to share. You sent in a lot of amazing notes. Um, a prophetic word that you gave to the SCOTUS nominee. And I thought we would start out with that uh, because there's so much packed into this word that I know there's layers and layers to this word. So why don't you just go ahead and start out with that one? Yes. Can I actually read the word? It's short. It's a short word, but this word was given to me on uh, in January 2017 and actually was published on Elijah List on the social media page February the 2nd of 2017. And it says new Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch. He will fight for the unborn prayer back in schools and more. And it says a word by DeMonte Edmonds. And I said, I, I inquired about him. And the Lord spoke to me that he will fight for the ancient landmarks of this nation of the United States. And Proverbs 22 and 28 came to me saying, do not remove the ancient landmarks set up by your fathers. There's some foundational things that help to make America great. And many of those things we've removed over the years and God wants to restore them. And he says, God said there are ancient landmarks that once made America great protection for the unborn, freedom of prayer, including in public schools, freedom of speech, right to bear arms. Many of them have been removed or tampered with. And as I go on, the Lord showed me a vision of a steel caught 45 defender. That's an old school pistol, um, by high caliber pistol. And God says the man should be a defender for that which is right and many of the traditional values that made America great. And before this time, I had never heard of this Supreme Court justice. And God says, as he fights for the ancient landmarks, I'm gonna surround him with Christian leaders who will be praying and fighting with him in the spirit. Together, God wants us to use the courts and prayers of believers mm -hmm. to bring healing to the land. And then at the end, the Lord told me, God says, look back to the Reagan era, look back to the Reagan administration, what was fought for back then has not been completed, but will be finished in this season and it will take a fighter and defender and the prayer of the saints to get it done. And, you know, we were talking a little bit before the show when this word came out. Some of the Supreme Court cases now that have taken place were not even on the books, not even in the news. They were not even they hadn't even stirred up yet. And then as well, some of the challenges that we're facing in America uh, that reflect back to the Reagan area would not pres were not present at that time. Oh, yeah. Yes. So two things have happened that I think are significant, maybe some more. The first one is that Roe versus Wade was just overturned. And that was part of that prophetic word. You know, I have 
a lot of friends that are prophets, prophetic, spiritual people. And there's almost a split, maybe 50, 50, 60, 40. Some are in agreement with it. Some are in disagreement with it. Some feel it's the Lord. Some feel it's not the Lord. And, you know, oh, wow. I'm a person that I, yep. That's surprising. You'll be surprised by many things these days, sadly. But <laughs> wow. Yes. yes. Um, and I see some of the debates on social media. I see a lot of the pastors, leaders that I know, some I don't know. They're debating, they're arguing. Everybody has an opinion. But you know, every, everybody has a nose, everybody has an ear, everybody has other body parts that I won't name. But your opinion doesn't mean that that is the mind of Christ or that is the will of heaven. And when I look back to this prophetic word, you know, sometimes the Lord give me so many prophetic words, unless I archive them and keep them, I don't even remember that they were published. I don't remember that the Lord gave it to me because I'm a very neutral person. You know, I'm not politically uh, uh, polarized. I'm not politically energized. I'm not personality driven. I just want to hear what the Lord is saying. And I try to keep the middle ground. The Lord told me years ago, he said, be like Billy Graham. You know, Billy got in trouble because he over associated himself with one I guess, candidate. But with that being said, I don't have any agenda with this word. The Lord gave me the word. I forgot about it until it came back up in my memory. And I was like, wow, Roe versus Wade is happening now. And I put the word back out and and it was reversed. And I said, the Lord had this prophesied that this is what he wanted to do. This is what he planned to do. This is what he wanted people praying for. So for me, it's, it's no debate. Um, I, I can even have my own personal feelings. It doesn't matter. The Lord spoke this and he spoke it to me, so I'm not going to argue with the Lord. The second thing that's taking place, um, and I don't even know the name of the case. I can't think of it right off that. Maybe you know, Kelsey, is this coach that prayed on the school property. Yes, I and, read about that. Yes, and the, and the Supreme Court decided in his favor. And so now it's this big push to get prayer. I believe we can get it fully back in schools. I believe yeah, we can get definitely. fully back in schools. Um, a few days ago, I was actually... Excuse me, I'm going to say this. The restroom is one of the best places to get revelation. You're not thinking about anything. Lord can speak to you clear when you're about to take a shower or wash your hands or brush your teeth. A lot of prophets get revelation in the restroom. But anyway, I was going to brush my teeth, wash my face, you know, the wake up type of thing. And the Lord began to speak to me that when and if we get prayer back into schools, one of the challenges will be other religions, whether whether they're Buddhist, Hindu, or even Satanist, they're going to say, well, we deserve prayer in schools too. And the Lord said that that's not going to be the issue because you know what? The prophets of Baal, they were allowed to pray. They were encouraged to pray to Baal, but our God answered by fire. The prayers of one man, Elijah, Elijah, look, I'm Elijah streams, but the prayers of Elijah was powerful enough was had enough fervency that it called the fire of heaven down and all of their prayers all of their rituals couldn't accomplish anything so in this season we need to push for prayer to be back totally in school and not get into this big fight with all the religions all the groups about them not being able to pray uh because they're going to say it's not equitable it's not fair and from a legal standpoint it's not from a spiritual standpoint personally i don't care because i'm a christian and i want to see you know, only prayers to our God, but God's going to answer by fire. We're going to see some things when prayer gets back into school. I mean, we're going to see some powerful testimonies. We're going to see, I mean, I would really, I'm seeing almost now, like, you know, they begin to pray a casual prayer to God and the Holy Spirit breaks out and people speaking in tongues right there in the class and, and the administration don't know what to do and people have to explain it. I mean, God's going to answer by fire. So we don't need to worry about if other religions want to have their one or two people praying. We need to be able to pray in the schools, teachers, administrators, students. Uh, yeah. That is something. And have you noticed? If you compare shootings, violence, stabbings, mass shootings in school, pre versus post prayer being removed from school, there is an exponential difference. Because yes. when you when you when you kick prayer out, it's almost like kicking God out. Yeah. And if we're not living in union with the Lord, if there's no union, so then if we're separated from him, then all this sin can come in and darkness can come in because there's a separation from God. And so for people who have that on their heart, that because I think the intercessors watching, that's something that is on their heart to pray. 
you know, should should that be or maybe pastors are watching? Should we start to pray again for that? You know, that prayer would be brought back into schools and really go after that as the intercessors watching or the pastors watching start to begin to pray like that. And in, in when your groups are together or even small group leaders on here, small group leaders, uh, you know, big, big uh, ministry leaders. Uh, people to have intercessory networks, uh, people to have a prophetic voice, people to have influence, whether you're Baptist, uh, uh, charismatic, whether you're Pentecostal, prophetic or pathetic. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, we should. This is something I think we can agree on. Um, yes. You know, the body didn't necessarily agree on Roe versus Wade, didn't agree on presidency and other things. But I don't see any reason we shouldn't agree that prayer should be back in schools. This is something I think that we can really unify and unite uh, under a common constitution to see prayer restored into schools. And then once it's restored, we need to be intentional and systematic enough to say, hey, I live in Oregon, I live in Arizona, I live in California, I live here. I'm going to do something or put somebody in place. You know, a lot of pastors, you have teachers at your school, you have principals at your school, you have workers in your school, you have janitors. But we need to be intentional and systematic to kind of stir up the pot with the schools around us. You know, it may be your children that are going to be the ones that, that bring it back in, but we need to not just get the laws on the book. We need to take action as well. Yes. So you talked about seeing the division between Roe v. Wade and uh, presidency and all, all of these things happening. You're seeing, seeing a great division and you're going to teach on now the key to overcoming a spirit of division because if we're seeing one thing right now it is a it's such a separation a division a separation i mean and it is it is powerfully waging war in the body of christ yes yes let's jump into that and then as well i want to get back to the reagan era and how oh, that go ahead yeah and then let's let's tackle that and then let's jump over perfect segue but i was thinking about the lord said look back to the reagan era when i received that prophetic word i didn't actually know what the lord was totally saying sometimes as time moves forward there's an unfolding of revelation and before the reagan era there was a stagflation there was inflation there was high unemployment uh there was housing issues and right now what are we dealing with we're dealing with you know i know several people that are doing well financially they want to move they want to relocate but the housing values have skyrocketed so much they can't afford to move even if they make a profit of 100 or 200 thousand selling their house that's going to get sucked up with the move so it's like they they've made no 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 <laughs> they've made no headway and then as well we're dealing with some real heavy inflation i think the inflation is going to continue. I think we're going to see some of the spikes with it. I put out prophetic words um, last year. We need to prepare for uh, uh, cycles of famine. We need to already be prophetically positioned for that. We don't need to be in fear. We need to be more dependent upon God. And you know, one thing I've learned about God, he loves a challenge. These things that make people afraid, when you really walk with God, you find out that these are the times that he shows up the best. These are the times he really stretch forth his hand. These are the times that he really moves supernaturally in your life. You know, the, the one and a half or two COVID years were the best years for us. We were able to accomplish things in that in the one year period that we couldn't accomplish the, the eight or nine years before that, like four major things, four major yeah. things I prayed and interceded for. So there may be a drought for mankind, but we're the God kind. And we hear from God, we obey God, and he shows up supernaturally. The other thing that's taking place, um, back in the, 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 I believe it was the 70s, OPEC, Oil and Petroleum uh, uh, Cooperative Group, which Middle Eastern nations, they got together. We thought it would help us uh, collaborate with them. We thought it would help us uh, to get better deals and bargains on oil. It backfired. They began mm -hmm. to strong arm us. They began to raise prices. There was a, a, a time even where there was rations at the pumps. I believe that maybe maybe was during the Carter period. And, you know, when Reagan came in, he uh, renegotiated with OPEC and he put some demands on the table. And, you know, those those gas prices uh, became more stable and the availability of gas. There wasn't this fear. And right now, I don't know about where you're at, Kelsey, but not long ago, gas prices here were like two seventy five and now they're five dollars a gallon. If Same. not more, I don't even look at the, the price anymore. I just gas up by faith. 
Um, <laughs> so, so a lot of those challenges that we faced on the Reagan era, we're facing again, and we need God to come in and get wisdom to our legislature, get wisdom to our executive branches, get wisdom yes. to our, 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 our people in government. And we need to pray uh, that America uh, experiences a, a spiritual revival, but also a revival of our quality of life. Yes. Amen. That's so wonderful and such an encouraging word because the Lord spoke this to you a long time in, in 2017. Yes. So this was, he was already letting us know, hey, it's going to get better. You know, it, it'll be it, just trust in me. It will get better. And I love that he said, look back to the Reagan administration. So look back to that and see what God did. And God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He could do the same things again. So let's talk about the spirit of division. Yes. Because man, this is a huge one. We're we're seeing yes. we're seeing this really uh, run rampant right now. Yes, and some of it is the plan of the enemy. Some of it is the plan of malefactors that's within the government. You know, there are political parties, but. Even within the government, we call it the shadow government or the behind the scenes people. There are people that have other agendas that they don't publicize. You know, I share with one publisher, chief editor, that a cer certain social media um, platform that a certain government agency had uh, infiltrated it. And he didn't tell me this at the time. And I think you know this gentleman, but he, he said, you know, it's kind of hard for him to see and believe, but he told me years later, after he saw how the algorithm began to work against them when he was sharing certain messages and sharing, you know, certain news and, and uncovering stuff that was fake news. He saw how the mathematics algorithm switched on him and changed on him purposely, intentionally, not just on one site, on multiple sites. And he said, yeah. now I'm saying what you're saying. So there are people, groups, they have their own agenda and they don't operate necessarily by trying to go through the books and the proper channels they do things underhanded to um <laughs> influence people's thoughts and emotions and when you bring the vision that's one of the base t best times that you can bring quick transformations you know in the dollar it talks about dollar it talks about uh, order out of chaos some people create chaos so that in the midst of division and the chaos they bring what they want their type of order, their type of change in law. So with that being said, the Lord showed me that there are some messages, three key messages uh, that we need to really make sure that they're in our arsenal. One is the glory of God. There are so many doctrines, there are so many things taking place, but we need to make sure that we are sharing about the glory of God because the glory of God is the ultimate unifier not the anointing, not the prophetic. When the glory of God shows up, all of a sudden doctrine, race, creed, unforgiveness, bitterness just leaves. People yes. get so focused on God and glorifying God in the midst of glory. All of that leaves, you know, in the uh, 19th century, there were still some Native Americans that in West Virginia, Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, uh, you know, they were at odds with the settlers or the the, the, the Americans, the, the Native Americans. And, you know, that Cane Ridge revival, Red River revival, the second great awakening came and the glory of God would be so strong in those meetings. It was one gentleman. His name is Peter Cartwright. He was a Methodist preacher. He actually was a congressman. And guess who beat him? Abraham Lincoln beat him in Illinois. He was congressman for four years. But when this man would preach, he would say the glory of God would show up. 50, 100, two, three, 400 people just, while he's talking, just pass out under the power of God, just like something knocked mm -hmm. them over. And, you know, Native Americans would come to his meeting. There was reconciliation. There was healing. There was love. You know, people that were uh, anti-Christian, the people that were fighting in those communities, when they came and the glory of God manifested, their differences went out the window and people became hungry for the things of the spirit. So we have to uh, have this talk and make sure that we are intentional about seeing the manifestation of the glory of God. That's that's something I'm really bulldogging myself in our meetings and our ministry. Secondly, messages about the love of God. Sometimes we become so focused on pushing our opinion, 
pushing our agenda, convincing people, debating with people, pulling their arms, telling them this is what God. And there's an old saying, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. We need the love of God. That's what's going to win the Democrats. That's what's going to win the Republicans. That's what's going to win the Satanists. That's what's going to win the atheists. Atheists. I just saw this testimony by this gentleman that was a leader in the satanic church in South Africa. And he said he was somewhere in this Christian woman. She went up to him and said, you need a hug. She was praying for him, gave him a hug. He said he never felt that type of love in his life. And he converted and, and he's left the satanic church. And it's, it's kind of interesting wow. that the satanic church in South Africa wrote him a letter. We wish you well in your future success and endeavors, which I felt kind of, you know, kind of funny. But um, that one hug. She didn't go up to him and point her finger at him and, and say, you're going to hell and, and, and what you're doing is wicked. And that would have further probably emboldened him to continue on his route and, and hate Christians. But she went to him and hugged him with the love of God. And, and it was real. You know, it's, the Bible says faith works by love. And so I believe there is a message of the love of God that's going to break down a lot of these barriers and come against some of the things that the enemy wants to push in this nation. The other thing is the message of brotherhood. The message of universal brotherhood. The early church had brotherhood. You know what happened? When they went into these other territories, all of a sudden it wasn't just Jewish believers. It was believers of all walks. Most of us are most of the time more comfortable with people that look like us, people that believe like us, people yeah. that talk like us, and we swim in one little lake. But the body of Christ is a big ocean. The world is a big ocean. There's a message yeah. of brotherhood that we can disagree agreeably but some things we can't disagree on, Jesus being Savior, the Holy Spirit, salvation, you know, some things, they're, they have to be absolute. But there are other things that there's still a brotherhood that we have to have if we're going to overcome the works of the enemy. That's so powerful. And I love how you talked about winning people by love, because I think many of our own testimonies are because of the love of God shown to us, not because we were told we were doing things wrong. When Jesus encounters us, he is, God is love. And that's part of my own testimony. So when you say that, it's like, yeah, I know what that's like. I mean, people could have preached at me all the time, but that wouldn't have changed my heart. It's the goodness of God that led me to repentance. It was the love of God. And that's so, so powerful. And if there was a generation that would be raised up in receiving then they could give it and so receiving the love of god i know we're kind of i'm gonna kind of take you off a little bit but i know you you can you could talk about this <laughs> receiving the love of god is hard for a lot of people yes and and then they they can't give away so how do we we how do we receive the love of god in number a practical one way? number one the first step is this that you us receiving or you receiving the love of god is not based on your goodness. It's not based on your works. It's based on that he first loved us yes. and he gave his only begotten son. So he first loved you. He loves you. And it's not based on your goodness because your goodness will never be good enough. And a lot of people try to relegate receiving the love of God to, well, if I do this or if I change this or if I go to church. No, no, no. It's there. It's available. Number two, you cannot compare God as a father or parent to your natural parents. One of the things that I've encountered in ministry, there are many individuals, they have parents that abandoned them, rejected them, abused them, never told them that they loved them, uh, all of these different things. But God's not like that. He's faithful. He's consistent. He's a loving parent. And sometimes we have to ask God to heal us from parent wounds before we can see him as a true father. Because some people feel, well, my own father, my own mother that's here in the flesh abandoned me or didn't love me. How could this invisible God that people say is love is, is supposed to love me? Well, he's not your parents. He's better. <laughs> then number three, come to him with honesty and transparency. You know, people ask me a lot of times when I tell them, I tell a lot of younger people, you need to start a prayer life, whether it's five minutes or 10 minutes, start talking to God. This is what they said to me. Well, how do I pray? I said, I'll tell you what, talk to me. Let's have a conversation. That's how you pray. Just it's so good. Don't be religious. Don't try to impress God with your words. Don't try to use Bible verses because you probably don't know enough yet anyway to use them. And talk to him like you'll talk to your best friend. 
without profanity. <laughs> but talk to God. <laughs> Some people talk to their best friend that way. But talk to him and be open, be honest. Tell him that you're struggling. Tell him, you can tell him, I don't believe that you love me. I need a sign. You know, and he's mm. going to graduate you. He's going to meet you. He just wants you to come to him. You know, it says come. That's a powerful word. If you just take the time and come to God, he'll make himself known. He'll make his love known. And then you'll want to keep coming back and back and back and back. And you'll become addicted to the love of God. You'll become motivated by it, fueled by it. And it'll change yeah. your life. Yes. Jesus said he lives in the love of God. And we are to live in the love of God too. Will you pray real quick before we move on? For those people, when you started talking about abandonment and parents who have not been there, I, I really felt that in my heart. So would you pray for those listening yeah. who maybe have had that exact experience? Yes. Well, Father, we thank you for your sons and daughters. We thank you, Lord, that you will never leave us or forsake us. You promise us that. And we pray for those that may be dealing with rejection or abandonment from their natural parents. We pray, Lord, that the power of the Holy Spirit the love of God and the blood of Jesus would move into the deep recesses of their soul, the deep places of their subconscious. And Lord, that you would uproot those feelings of rejection and bitterness and that you would plant into them, Lord, the seeds of your love. Draw them to you, Lord. It says in the Song of Solomon, draw us and we'll run after thee. Draw them, Lord, by your loving kindness that brings man to repentance, but also brings them to worship at your feet. We pray that your fatherly love and your fatherly heart would welcome them with warm arms and they would feel the tangible embrace of your love by your spirit in Jesus mighty name. Amen. I know the Lord has shown you some stuff about false flags. So what is what has he been speaking to you about that? Well, I'm going to tell you what's interesting. When I sent Illumination an email on what I wanted to talk about because I was asking the Lord. The next day or later that day, I saw what uh, President Joe Biden, POTUS, put, um, he signed this gun legislation, legislation. And I almost was going to say, let's take this point off because something already just happened. You know, I like my stuff to be before it hits the news. Some people, you know, there's a saying, prophets speak about what's going to happen. Historians talk about what's already happened. Um, I don't want to be good. a historian. You know, I believe God's called me as a prophetic voice. But some of the things that we see there are going to make us emotionally outraged or provoke certain feelings. Like I said earlier, there are certain groups that I believe help orchestrate this stuff. It's not all organic. And some of it is, you know, they're looking for a reaction. They have, these incidents happen five or six times. Then we can try to push these laws in quickly. And I believe that one of them, I've traveled all over the world. There's a lot of countries you, can own, you cannot own a weapon. And in most of those countries, there's dictators, communism, uh, uh, government, kleptocracy. I'm not gonna name the countries, but several of them. I see some similarities. I believe that certain groups of powers want our rights to be restricted. All of a sudden we're seeing all of these mass shootings and then they're, see at first they were just at the malls, the theaters, the streets, but now it's children because you know, one thing that's going to stir people up yes. if you mess with children. And so we have to be very discerning, even in those situations. Now I have four kids. I actually have, probably eight kids at my house today. We're the kids house in the neighborhood, but we have to be very discerning. We want to pray over our children, pray over the schools, but very discerning that an incident or incidents don't cause us to, to support bills and legislation or changes that may not be in our best interest as a country for the long term. And so I believe there are going to be some other, even with the, so when the Lord told me last year that, there will be an interruption or disruption of the food supply chain. And two things happened. The first thing that happened, um, all of these boats were stuck at sea and couldn't get to port. That was one of the first thing. And, you know, in some places, now I'm in Atlanta, I was in Virginia. I told my family, go and get some extra food, get extra supplies. They said a lot of grocery stores were scarce. The second thing that happened, the Canadian truck drivers went on strike protesting against Trudeau. Lord showed me that there were going to be 
some other things that take place, three, I believe, that there are going to be these other pockets where there, there's a disruption of supplies. Uh, but he did tell me as well that some of it was, the word he used was contri contrived, contrived, meaning that it's not just cause and effect, it's man-made to instill fear and to try to control the masses. Um, so as prophetic people and as the body of Christ, we need to see beyond the news. We need to be see beyond our emotions. We need to see beyond what's being said to what's being really done and the motive behind it, behind the scenes. We're seeing a huge attack, like you, you were talking about with the children and the, the um, you know, um, attacks on that. But it, it seems like it's coming um, against the children in a lot of other ways, too. Because we're, we're seeing a lot of attacks now on young, it seems younger and younger and younger children. And I think any parent, the second you see anything coming against the innocence of children, you automatically rise up in the Lord. And with your own family, like, you know, a mama eagle, you just like <laughs> gather, you know, the chicks under your wings. Like, that's not going to happen to my family. And you know, that's obviously a spiritual thing happening with the children. Definitely. And, you know, anytime that God wants to move greatly and bring deliverance and revival to a nation, the enemy attacks the children with Moses. You know, God, Moses was chosen to be a deliverer to his entire generation and his people group, uh, the Hebrews. All of a sudden, Pharaoh issues this wicked decree and let's kill all the male child children under this age. And then Jesus the ultimate, ultimate of all deliverers. Herod issues this wicked decree. All of the, the children under this age and this geographical location, let's just slaughter them. And there was crying, you know, throughout that territory. And so um, the children have the seeds of deliverance. They have the revelation uh, that God's supernaturally promised to their generation. And they have the prayers of their forefathers and foremothers that have prayed for things to happen that may not happen in our lifetime. And the Lord has seen fit that that happened in the lifetime of our generation. So the enemy always wants to kill off that which is to come, the deliverers. So we need to be intentional to pray for our children, uh, intentional to uh, cover them. I'll tell you something interesting. Where we live at used to be, I don't, I don't think now, when I moved to, I'm not going to say where I live at because I don't want people to know exactly where I live. But where I live at, when I first moved here, they said, man, you live in the, the middle of the clan territory. I said, what? My seven-year-old daughter had a dream that men in clan uniforms with the letters KKK, she said white uniforms, came and attacked her and some other kids. She doesn't, wow. she's seven. She don't even know what the KKK is. She don't even know what it is. She's never been taught on it. So I know it's prophetic. She's super prophetic. You know, she sees Jesus all as goes to heaven. And we're over here just trying to get a word from the Lord. But I felt like it was symbolic, not so much of the KKK, but symbolic of uh, the spirit of, of division, spirit of racism, spirit of hate, all of those things that we feel like the KKK has symbolized yeah. and given it to a child. The Lord is showing me uh, that this next generation of children will not be plagued by some of the prejudices. When I say prejudices, I'm not talking about just color. There are a lot of prejudices that we have. They're going to really move forward in the glory of God, the love of God, the unity of the spirit. And they're going to break down some barriers that maybe we were not able to do fully in our time. And so the enemy's afraid of that. Yeah. It seems like kids are there. This generation is so powerful and my kids the same way. They're dreamers too. And it's amazing at what they dream and they come and tell me and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's incredible. You know, it's like seeing, like you said, seeing heaven, seeing the staircase of heaven, seeing Jesus being in a car. I'm like, this is amazing. And it's really showing us that the Lord is doing something already, planning already in that generation, already revealing himself to them in a powerful way. I mean, such a strong, no wonder there's been such a fight against them. I mean, it makes sense because they're, they're, and I know a lot of people watching, your kids are very prophetic. So listen to their dreams and encourage them. If they come and tell you, hey, I had this experience or I saw the Lord, you know, don't say, oh, I don't think so. You know, that they're making that up. Encourage them in what they're saying because 
I mean, it's powerful what what kids are seeing and moving in right now. Man, I can't I can't wait to see what's going to come forth, what God is going to birth through um, that age group. I don't know what what generation are they? Do you I don't know? know. I think they're younger than me. After they got to X and Y, I just lost count. So yeah, I, I maybe, maybe it's Z. Are they, are they, are they I'm Z? not sure. Maybe some. Maybe someone. Maybe Paul knows or Illumination. Maybe you know what generation? Young seventy. Okay, Gen Z and and then Alpha is after that. So maybe wow. they're Alpha. Yeah, maybe they're Alpha. You know what? That man's. They're like the X Men. They the God's giving them these superpowers. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And how about the name Alpha? I mean, that's. That's, that's prophetic in itself. Yes, God's doing a new thing. Alpha. So when God speaks to us, is it always the same way? When God speaks to you, do you feel like it's always the same way? Or does he speak in a lot of different and unusual ways to you? You know what? He speaks in various different ways. It could be through my children, often it's through with my wife. Sometimes, you know, I've prayed and asked God something and I'm flipping through the channels and a commercial comes on and the information is there. It's a few times I've, I've prayed and a, a ads popped up on my phone. I click on the ad and it's the answer to the question that I've been praying about. You know, I just put an article out how I was praying about an investment opportunity and, and some of the Lord had people prophesied to me and I'm coming back from a ministry trip. Actually, I'm coming back from Florida, dropping my family off. I'm sorry. And the Uber driver, when he finds out I'm a pastor, he stops and said, pastor, the Lord's spoken to me. I want you to pay attention. He's African. He's he's Ghanaian. Pay attention. The Holy Spirit wants you to know this. Write this down. He gives me all these figures and has me do the stuff on the calculator. He said, I'm going to tell you with a man from Himalayas told me. And he said, there's a reason God's telling me to tell you this. And anyway, he didn't know it was something I had been actually praying the Lord about. And he just gave me the blueprint for it. So Wow. God speaks in so many ways, dreams, visions, audible voice, inaudible voice, prophetic words. And I just love it because it keeps the things exciting. If you were to teach someone the basics, when you first started learning about how to hear God's voice, if you can go back to that time, what was that process like for you? Was it just all of a sudden or was it you had to kind of walk through it was this God and maybe sometimes it wasn't and you had to discern. I mean, what did that look like for you? If I can take you back, I don't know okay. how long ago that would be. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to give too much information, but um, <laughs> I laugh when you ask that question. Honestly, at first I wasn't trying to hear from God. Um, I did spend time reading the Bible. I did have a prayer life and the times that he really spoke to me and I knew that it was him. It was always number one, the voice or what I was being hear, thought I was hearing, it just came out of nowhere. Two, it didn't necessarily feel like my own thoughts or my own words. And three, there was always this feeling of urgency attached to it. And so at this time, I was, you know, in high school and I was hanging out in places, you know, where people were doing criminal activity and riding around with people that were doing criminal activity. And I remember one time I was in the car and it was full of smoke and the smoke wasn't the glory of the Lord, Kelsey. This was a different type of smoke. It's legal in Oregon. And I heard this voice say, st stop smoking weed. And I look around. I said, either this is some potent stuff or I just heard from God. But there was a fear attached to it. And I stopped from that day forth as a teenager. And there are other times that the Lord would tell me, don't get in that car, go home right now. And something always crazy would take place. Wow. And so I knew the Lord could speak. And I knew what the voice sounded like. And then amazingly, when I got into got back into church and got really serious about God, I just wanted to hear that voice. I wanted to have that relationship. I wanted to be in an active relationship with God. And I prayed, Lord, let me hear your voice. I sought the voice of the Lord. And a lot of times I didn't hear anything. Then all of a sudden, he began to speak and speak more. But for the basic person, it starts with a hunger. You have to have a desire to hear from God. If you have the desire to hear from God, don't worry about the, the, the step one to step three. That desire is going to show God that you're serious. The Bible says through desire, a man separates himself and intermeddles with all wisdom. That desire sometimes will call you to put, cause you to pull away from social media, cause you to pull away from your family, cause you to pull away from the television, whether it's an hour or 30 minutes or a day and say, God, I need to hear something from you. Also, the Bible says, uh, when you pray, whatsoever you desire, believe that you receive it and you should have it. If you have a desire that God speaks to you, 
when you pray, believe that he's going to speak to you. It may not happen right away, but it will happen. That's so good. And, and being a prophet, did you always know that you were called to be that? Or was that something that God revealed to you over time as you started to seek him in his word and stuff? Or, or did you always know that there was like a prophetic call in your life? So I grew up Baptist, Southern Baptist. We didn't have prophets. We had pastors. We had deacons and trustees. <laughs> prophets. What's a trustee? Exactly. <laughs> you had to be Baptist. No, the trustee is, is almost like a deacon, but almost like a custodian of, I don't, I don't know. So they deal with the, the, the legalities of the church, the paperwork, the facility, the deacons deal with like, you know, um, ministry of helps It's only okay. in the Baptist denomination. So we had, we had pastors, deacons, and trustees. <laughs> so with that being said, I didn't know that prophets existed, but when I was, Nine years old, the Lord visited me twice in one night. It was terrifying for me, but I knew it was the Lord. And I begged him not to kill me. And I also begged him, please don't do this again, um, which I would later renounce that prayer and ask him to visit me again. But with that being said, I knew when the Lord visited me that he had called me to the prophetic office. Prophetic How ministry. did he visit you? You have to share that. <laughs> okay. You can't just say that and then not tell us. <laughs> so my, my parents had went through a divorce. We were living with my uncle. And so my mother and I shared the bedroom. She had one bed and I had another bed. There was two beds in that room. And it was kind of a low point in our, our life. I was about nine, about to turn 10. And one night I was in the bed and I was awakened by this presence. And I immediately knew that it was the Lord Jesus Christ. And he walked into the room. And when he walked into the room, every molecule, every cell came alive, was on edge. I couldn't run. I couldn't say anything. I was... I don't want to say paralyzed. I was overcome by the presence and glory of God. And I also knew in that moment at nine or 10 years old that I was worthy of the sentence of death. Because when you're in such an awesome presence of purity, love, holiness, you know, I don't think anyone's going to meet with Jesus that hasn't, you know, that's not living right and be able to debate with him about why they should get into heaven. They're going to instantly know that his judgment is righteous. And so, I tried to run. I couldn't move a muscle. The Lord was speaking to me. And then when he he kind of let the presence pulled away from me and I could move and talk, mm. I just got, you know, I went under the sheets and I started talk, talking like, God, please. You know, my mother got up to go to the restaurant because I woke her up. So I went outside of the bathroom door and sat on the floor. And she said, what are you doing? I tried to go in the bathroom with her. She was like, you can't come. I said, please, I just don't want to be alone. I couldn't even give her the words of what was happening. So we go back in the bedroom. She goes to sleep. And I had prayed to God. I said, God, please don't do that again. That was just, you know, it was too much. It was terrifying. It caught me off guard. You know, if you gave me a date and time that you're going to show up, I probably could be a little bit better prepared. I didn't pray that, but that's what I was thinking. He came back in the room a second time. He disregarded that prayer. But this time, a wave of peace came over me. And after he spoke to me, I went back to sleep. So I shared this with wow. one of the most spiritual people that I thought I could share it with that was a uh, our uncle by marriage and all he had said to me was seems like god's trying to tell you something i'm thinking duh and i just never really shared it and i suppressed it and didn't think about it i didn't know who to talk to about it you know i didn't hear people talk about the lord visiting them i felt like people would think that you're a quack and loony and you're you're either lying or you're trying to be super deep so i suppressed that for years and just didn't uh-huh. think about it and so later when the lord began to deal with me about, about ministry all of that stirred back up Wow. That is so powerful. Okay. Tell us other times where the Lord's visited you. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I want to, I want to know because it's, it's, it does something to me. And I know every person listening, when you hear testimonies about Jesus visiting someone and just how you shared that every molecule of everything of you stood up and I mean, it does some, when you share these testimonies, I, it marks me, even though I, I wasn't there, your yes. testimony marks me because I feel the presence of God. Every time someone shares a legitimate story of when they encounter Jesus, I feel the Lord so strong when they share that it's a, it's almost like I can see it in my head, what was happening to you and, and link up with that and see the beauty of Jesus and the love of Jesus for you. Yeah. And it affects me. So Please share more. <laughs> so, 
I have this to share. This is not a book plug. It's just relevant to the topic. Somebody, I know it was, Prophet Naeem, he gave me a word. He said, you're going to write books. A lot of them are going to come out of supernatural encounters. Sometimes you get these words and you're thinking, yeah, right. You know, but I was in Europe. I had taught on discerning of spirits. You know, I was traveling, teaching pastors, leaders. And that night when I went to bed, the Lord visited me and said, you're not teaching the topic correctly. Wow. You know, you think you're doing a great job. Lord tells you, you're, you're not really teaching it correctly. I had done this teaching on discerning of spirits. I even had a video that's still on YouTube somewhere. And I talk about there's four dimensions of this gift. And Lord said, no, there's seven. And I'm going to break it down for you. And so a few years later, I ended up writing discerning of spirits. I'm trying to. Wow. Uh, seven dimensions of revelation and the lord gave me more insight into that gift that's probably one of the stronger gifts that i operate with um and after he visited me definitely it got you i can meet a person i can just see their gifts i can see their like i just you know it just just kicks in um and well as doing a lot of deliverance so he visited me with that word of correction and rebuke but he gave it to me in a teaching form another time was march 2007 I was spending a lot of time with the Lord and I was a little discouraged because I felt like I was spending time with the Lord, but nothing was really moving forward. It felt like I had a ceiling and a young lady named Prophetess Lachelle Evans, uh, Jones Evans, uh, rest in peace to her. She called me and she said, I, I have a young man. He's close to me. I've been telling you about him. I've been telling him about you. I feel like we're missing pieces of the puzzle. And um, he's been on here before, Dr. Hakeem. And we're on the phone, us three. We're talking about Jesus. We're talking about God. We're just excited to be talking. This is March 2007. And I'm on the cell phone. If I have my cell phone, let me see if I have it. Oh, here we go. I'm on the cell phone and I'm about to get in my vehicle and drive to the store. So I'm on the phone and I, I open the door. When I open the door, the Lord's standing there, bright as white light. Wow. I thought he was the. <laughs> Now, please, I thought he was the angel of death coming to take me home because I had this, I, I had, no, seriously, I, I wasn't living in sin. I was, you know, I was really going home for the Lord, but I felt like I keep prophetic archives and I had just read to the Lord all these prophetic words in my life that had not come to pass. I felt like, you know, I'm doing all this praying. Maybe I missed something. Maybe I missed my window. Maybe I'm a failure. And so I felt like, well, maybe. Maybe it was the angel coming to take me home. I, I didn't know. You know, I thought about the Bible with uh, Baal. I hadn't been a false prophet, but just I thought it was the angel of the Lord coming to take me home. And so I began to scream. And I'm not a no super emotional person. I'm probably one of the worst people to have on the front row in the church service because I'm not going to be like emotional and jumping and doing all this stuff. I'm, I'm pretty sober. And so <laughs> um, with that being said, that day I began to scream like a little girl. I begin to holler, holler, and I'm on the phone saying, the angel's here, the Lord's here. I know it's the angel, the Lord, one of them. I just know the Lord's at the door. And I said, I need you guys to pray. I need you to pray right away. So the, the glory of God is blinding me. And wow. I can I know how my living room is set up. So I walk backwards, and I'm asking Prophet Zashel and Prophet Hakeem to pray for me. And I sit in this chair, and they just begin to prophesy over me. And while this is happening, it's like the Lord is standing like two feet in front of me. And as they're prophesying, when they say certain words and phrases, it's like this glory and this fire just comes all over me. And wow. what they said, the Lord is releasing you into the apostolic ministry. You've been operating as a prophet. You felt like you had a ceiling, but it was the Lord that put that ceiling today there. And the Lord says tonight that ceiling is being broken. That ceiling is being removed. He's launching into the Zod dimension. You've not sought for it, but the Lord is seeing your heart and he's seeing your, your faithfulness and he's moving you into this apostolic realm and dimension. And so um, that was another time that, I mean, at my front door, it, it happened. That is so powerful. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. I feel that all the way through my body. Wow. Yes, 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 yes. So um, and then I became a little discouraged because I was so young. And I said, who's going to believe that on apostle? You didn't really have a young apostles back then. But the Lord did it. So anyway, that is another one. And then this book came. I have a friend, Dr. Joseph Martin. Uh, he's an older gentleman. He, he He's one of the only two people that was ordained by T.L. Osborne in America. T.L.'s daughter wow. is one. He's the only other one. He traveled with T.L. for nine years. Uh, Morris Cirillo was his good friend. Uh, Dr. Summerall was his, trained him as a pastor. He pastored a mega church, Word of Life uh, Fellowship in Virginia Beach. Um, 
as well. Schombach was his friend. His daughter received a miraculous healing under Schombach. So we were close for about four years. And um, he called me one day from, he was in Norway then, he called me, he prophesied to me. He said, I see that your wife is pregnant. She's going to have a girl. It's going to be a three hour labor, no complication. And the baby's going to weigh about seven pounds. What? My wife had been praying for a natural birth because her first birth was a cesarean. So I, I call my wife, Jessica, come downstairs. Dr. Martin's on the phone. He got a word for you. So he tells her the phone, tells her the word. She runs and up, up and down the stairs. She's hollering because she knows the Lord's answer her prayer. She doesn't want to get cut again. So fast forward, we have this baby, three hour labor, no pain meds, come on. no epidural. The baby's wow. six, like 6.93 pounds, seven pounds pretty much. So I'm in the hospital room. And I remember I had just told my wife, I said, wow, I felt the presence of the Lord after the baby was born. I called Dr. Martin. I said, Dr. Martin, let me tell you what happened. The baby's here, just like you prophesied. And he said, Lord's going to come and check on the baby. I said, we all, I just felt like the presence of the Lord standing on my wife like a 30, 40 minutes ago. I felt like that was the Lord. And he said, Lord's concerned about you too. He's going to check on you. And I'm like, okay. Um, but I just had a baby. So, you know, like you're, you're just... You got all these emotions and, and your excitement mm -hmm. going. Well, I was happening. That three weeks before we had the baby, my prayer time had been shot. <laughs> you know, it's like the last period, right? When you're about to, it's so much you have to get in order. You know, you're trying to have your, it just, prayer wasn't taking place too much. So I really had just told Lord, like, Lord, I'm sorry, but. I really like to be in prayer, but it just, you know, I'm having this baby. I hope you can understand, you know, I don't think Jesus never had a baby. So I don't know if you understood what I was going through and um, <laughs> where his baby. So that night I get in the bed, I left my arms to worship, <laughs> caught up with the Lord in heaven about an hour. Wow. And the Lord asked me a question. He said, he begins to talk to me about the revival that's going to come in the earth. And he asked me, do you know what the gifts of the spirit look like? And I never thought they had an appearance in the spirit realm. And then he asked me specifically about the gift of faith. And he begins to talk to me about the gift of faith. And he tells me how it operates, how it works, what it looks like in the spirit realm. And then he says, uh, this is when it, he said, you know, Wiggleworth and all these guys. He said, this is what was available to them in your generations in the past. And it's like this pool of, I don't want to say word, liquefied energy. Those purple and blue and silvery and goldish hues all around it. And he wow. said, when that's poured out on a man or woman, it allows them to do supernatural, miraculous acts. But then he says, look up. And it expanded like 20 times greater. He said, that's what's about to be available to the next generation. Oh, hallelujah. Praise and I put that in this, this book, The Supernatural Gift of Faith. So um, wow. there's been some other encounters, but those are the ones that just hit me right away. Oh my gosh. Those are so powerful. Okay. Where can we buy your books? Because now everyone's like, I want to know about that adventure to heaven and what he saw and what Jesus told him. Is that all in the um, supernatural faith book? Yeah. That one, that particular night in revelations is the supernatural gift of faith. There's on Amazon, uh, Barnes and Nobles, Lulu, Hawthorne, probably Amazon's the quickest way to get it. And please leave a review. Uh, honest review if you enjoy the book and if it blesses you if you ch decide to check those books out and you can uh you can visit him on his website too is there a link to your books on your website i believe so yes it's a link okay awesome yeah that's i'm gonna have to order that book because i'm telling you you just sparked a huge <laughs> interest in me Amen. to know what the lord the last outpouring i mean that's huge you could probably do a whole show come back and do a whole show just on that well, you know, Jeff and Mike actually had me to do six CDs, grueling CDs back to back to back. And they always tease me about it. They said, we don't know if he's going to make it. And I pulled it out. <laughs> so they'll tell you that story as well. <laughs> Jeff, how dare you work, work him to death. He said, oh, and he was sick when he did it. Ha ha ha. Oh, <laughs> they think that's funny. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but you pulled just through. Waiting, just waiting for me to fall over in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> they work, they work you boy, when you go visit them at Elijah streams. So yeah. would you pray for everybody watching, uh, whatever just God puts on your heart. And if you want to speak or prophesy, whatever you want to do, um, you're free to do.
Yes, well, Father, we just thank you for your anointing. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for those that are tuned in and tapped in. We pray, God, that a fresh well of prophetic grace will be stirred up in their life. I'm just sensing even now there's some that the Lord was speaking to you in supernatural and profound and powerful ways, and you've hit a dry spot. You've hit a dry season. But I decree now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that those wells will be unlocked. I decree now that any veils that have been upon the eyes of your heart be removed by the power of the Holy Ghost. And I ask God, that you would give them a personal and profound and provocative revelation for their own life, for their own destiny that will help shift them and recalibrate them to being in your perfect will. Lord, we decree now that the acceptable will of the Lord is not enough. We decree now that the perfect will of the Lord spring forth and come forth. And there's some even now, I'm feeling this super strong. You feel like that you've lost time. You feel like that you've lost seasons that the Lord will restore with the canker worm, the pommel worm, Satan and all his imps, and even your own indecisiveness and your own bad decisions have cost you, that there'll be a supernatural restoration and acceleration. Father, we release your hand of protection and I ask as well that you release supernatural wisdom that will connect us with the resources of heaven, that lack and famine will not be our portion, but only prosperity, health and abundance. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Amen. How can everybody follow you, DeMonte? Um, at DeMonte TV. I believe you guys can throw it up. That's on Instagram and TikTok. Uh, I'm going to put it here in the notes. And then my uh, Facebook page is DeMonte Edmonds, as well as at DeMonte TV at, on Instagram, TikTok, TikTok, and also Facebook. But my personal page is DeMonte Edmonds. So you can, there we go. You can get it on those social media sites at those places. Well, thank you so much for being on with us today. So much uh, revelation, really giving a lot of us um, tips on what to pray for, what to yes. believe God for in this time. Um, it's important to stand on who God is. And thank you for sharing those personal stories. I know those are so close to your heart. And yes. I just appreciate you being vulnerable and sharing all that. And you guys, make sure you grab his books. I know they're going to be incredible just meeting you the first time. This is the first time I've met DeMonte. And yes. I can tell you right now, I can't wait to read your books. Um, there's something stirring in me. I, I believe there's a lot of revelation in them uh, for my, my life and my prophetic walk. And I'm sure you guys uh, feel the same. So tomorrow we will be having Kim Robinson on with us. So you don't want to miss it. She's going to be sharing about heaven and uh, just amazing thing that the Lord has shown her. So you want to catch the live tomorrow. We will be on at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So make sure you tune in. And thank you so much for your generosity in giving uh, to us here. You know, it really makes it a huge difference. Um, and Steve will never tell you this, but he is the most generous yes. man. I mean, he is so generous. And so thank you for giving and thank you for sowing. Um, and if you feel led of the Holy Spirit right now to just sow, even if it's a small amount, that really helps us continue to do that. And Steve loves to just give it all away anyways. He's so, so generous. So thank you for sowing. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless you guys.